SpaceX's Starship is getting closer to launch, but the future of its Texas Starbase is in doubt. This is mainly because of the FAA's denial, which pushed SpaceX to Florida. The environmental assessment clears the way for test flights of the giant rocket to orbit, but any missions to Mars may depart from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. To put it simply, during the back and forth, Texas may have lost its claim on future historic flights to Mars. Notably, the OLIT-2 in Florida is now almost complete, and it's heading to SpaceX's first successful orbital Starship launch, which will probably occur between 1 and 12 months from now. SpaceX has just begun building the Florida Starship launch site earlier this year. Its progress completely eclipsed the whole space industry. SpaceX began stacking the Starship launch pad gantry structure in June, a big step in the company's construction of a second Starship base in Florida after one already built in South Texas. As of now, the company has installed the seventh of nine segments for the Starship launch tower at Launch Complex 39A. The tower is already taller than the existing fixed service structure at Pad 39A, left over from the Space Shuttle program, and is currently used to support Falcon 9 crew launches. Most recently, segment number 8 of SpaceX's Super Heavy Starship service gantry just rolled out to the launch pad. The company will be able to lift this segment into its place in the next few days. Meanwhile, at Roberts Road, the top tower section looks almost complete. This section will hold the pulleys and mechanisms needed for the chopsticks and is the final section required before a cap segment will be placed on top. SpaceX plans to move the final tower segment to Pad 39A in the coming weeks, aiming to finish the tower structure as soon as this month. There is more work to do after that, with completion of the launch mount, the addition of movable arms to the tower, and work on other ground support infrastructure needed for the Starship program. Amongst other work down at the Cape, construction is underway at a dizzying pace at the Star Factory. The building now has substantial roof and wall sections. Thank you so much to Greg Scott for capturing these great photos. In short, with current progress, we believe that a Pad 39A Starship launch site could be brought online in just the next few months. Elsewhere at Starbase, SpaceX is gearing up for the landmark Starship orbital flight. Amazingly, SpaceX most recently fired up the engines of its space-bound Starship prototype on Thursday afternoon in a dramatic test that also sets some of the surrounding landscape ablaze. Kicking off the test, SpaceX pumped several hundred tons of liquid oxygen and a much smaller quantity of liquid methane fuel into Ship 24 in about 90 minutes, producing a crisp layer of frost wherever the cryogenic liquids touched the skin of the rocket's uninsulated steel tanks. No frost formed on Starship's upper methane tank, implying that SpaceX only loaded methane fuel into internal header tanks meant to store propellant for landings. The hundreds of tons of liquid oxygen then were likely meant as ballast, reducing the maximum stress Starship could exert on the test stand, holding it to the ground. That potential stress is substantial. Outfitted with upgraded Raptor 2 engines, Starship S24 could have produced up to 1,380 tons of thrust when it ignited all six for the first time briefly Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time at Starbase. On top of smashing the record for most thrust produced during a Starbase rocket test, Ship 24's engines burned for almost eight seconds, making it one of the longest static fires ever performed on a Starship test stand. The static fire test marked another step toward launch for Ship 24, which is slated to conduct the Starship program's first ever orbital test flight in the coming months. Thank you so much to Lab Padre for documenting this footage. The static fire lasted just a few seconds. However, flames burned at Starbase for a while afterward. The test sparked a grass fire that brought the local fire department out as a safety precaution. As Zach Golden pointed out, there are almost 30 damaged or missing tiles on Ship 24 after a six-engine static fire test that lasted for eight seconds. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk then also replied with, There is a reason we do static fires. Much better to break things on the ground than en route to orbit. It sounds logical, doesn't it? It's also worth noting that Ship 24 itself also ignited two of its six Raptors a month ago on August 9th. That means Ship 24 actually took longer to prove its capabilities than its predecessor. Starship 20 began static fire testing with a single Raptor vacuum engine and ended with a simultaneous RVAC and sea level Raptor test in October of 2021. 
SpaceX took about three weeks to progress from Ship 20's first static fire test to its first static fire of all six engines, while Ship 24 conducted its first six-engine test a month later. It's possible that Ship 24's upgraded Raptor 2 engines are partially or fully to blame. Instead of jumping straight into hot Raptor testing like Ship 20, which began that particular campaign with a partial ignition preburner test, SpaceX put Ship 24 through seven spin prime tests before its first static fire. For Raptor, spin primes test the ignition step before preburner ignition, which is in itself a step before main combustion chamber ignition. On Raptor 1, the preburners would ignite once a high enough flow rate was achieved, producing hot gas that the main combustion chamber would mix and ignite one last time to start the engine. In an interview with Tim Dodd, CEO Elon Musk revealed that SpaceX was able to remove torch igniters from Raptor 2's main combustion chamber. It's unclear if that means that Raptor 2 now has zero MCC igniters, but a major change in the overall ignition process could explain why the start of Ship 24 and Booster 7 engine testing was so sluggish. The company now is cautiously attempting to ignite their Raptor engines as part of a process known as static fire testing. Eight weeks after the start of engine testing, B7 has only performed three static fires, two with one engine and one with a max of three or four engines. If the pace of Booster 7 testing doesn't change, the vehicle could be months away from a full 33 engine static fire attempt. Perhaps the single most important and uncertain test standing between SpaceX and Starship's first orbital launch attempt. However, it's worth mentioning that SpaceX is currently upgrading the OLM, or Orbital Launch Mount. It involves an addition to the Water Deluge system, with the beginning of installing a new black iron pipe to the exterior of the OLM, in which the process could take up to two weeks. And once completed, we could see the long-awaited static fire. With this increasingly protracted test campaign, perhaps even the ship's first orbital flight could take off from Florida instead of Starbase. Do you think that the first flight could take place at Starbase and become the gateway to Mars as Musk always envisioned? Or could it move instead to the KSC and become an addition to a long line of groundbreaking rocket launches in the history of the US space industry? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. As always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.